gangbusters. I'm Detective Cert, Homicide Division, New York City Police Department, your host for this presentation of Gangbusters. This is one of the most fiendish devices ever created in the history of the criminal investigations of the New York City Police Department. In a moment, I'll tell you more about it and about the tragedy it caused. Many criminals have planned the perfect crime and ended up convicts. Others have planned the perfect murder and ended up like Al Rocco. Al Rocco, 27 years old, good looking, and admits it. A heavy spender with an income as vague as his own background. Fiery temper. April 20th, 1937, arrested Jersey City NJPD. Grand larceny and auto theft. Methods used indicative of unpredictableness and extreme cruelty. March 16th, 1940, arrested Bronx County NYCPD. October 14, 1945, 8.30 p.m. Rocco had an important appointment at Moretto's nightclub. Happy? What do you think? You're not bad. It's been a whole year. Sure. Want to get married? Sure. When? Now. Okay. Are you serious? Why not? I don't know. Just the way you ask, that's all. Uh, you know me. I never do anything like anybody else. I know. Well? I love you, Rocco. You know that. Then let's get married. All right, Rocco. We'll get married. Okay. Want to dance? <laughs> you are unpredictable. <laughs> Al Rocco and Olga Trapani were married. They immediately leased an apartment, but Olga still knew as little about her husband as before. Rocco. She did know, however, he was unpredictable. <laughs> Good gag, huh? Well, at least there's no monotony. <laughs> and if that isn't enough, Here's some more. <laughs> hello? Oh, Helen. No. I haven't seen Rocco for weeks. We're either stone broke or swimming in it. Last month he had thousands. Today they're threatening to turn off the water. Me? No, I don't know where he goes. But I know I can't take too much of it. Rocco! Hi, kid. When did you get back? Oh, why the jumps? Lighting your cigarette with a dollar bill. Oh, look, we're in the cash. I haven't even had enough in the house to buy groceries, and you pull that. Oh, look, take it easy. You'll get lines. Rocco, I can't stand all this. Now, look, kid. Some guys like to get boozed up when they feel good. Other guys go out on bats. Me? I like to burn a buck like a cigarette. Makes me feel good. Makes me realize I'm somebody. I've come a long way. I want out, Rocco. I want a divorce. A divorce? You want to divorce me? Me? Look. Stop it! Stop it! I can't stand it! Shut up! You name one thing that's wrong with me. One thing. You wouldn't understand, Rocco. I wouldn't understand. Ever seen a better dresser? Well, answer me. No. Aren't I good looking? Yeah, Don't I dance better than anybody else? You know any man who would dare stand up to me? Do you? Do you? No. 
I told you you wouldn't understand, Rocco. I want a home. You think the whole world owes you everything. You think because you're, you're, you're good looking and, and you're a hot dresser and you can rumble and mambo, you're... Oh, it's no use, Rocco. You dumb cluck. It's no use, Rocco. Come back here. Come back here. All right, I'm leaving. Because if I'll stay, I'll kill you. You try and get a divorce, see what happens. Nobody walks out on Rocco. I got ways of handling things like that. Rocco's hideout, November 1, 1946. Rocco has stuck close to his hideout, but he'd heard some news around town. His dangerous, cunning mind was already beginning to work. I heard around. You're starting divorce proceedings. Yes. I told you not to. I can't stand it, Rocco. I've got to. Don't say I didn't warn you. Rocco? Do you have any idea of who was trying to kill you? It was Rocco. He didn't shoot to kill. He just wanted to hurt me. Do you know where he might be? No. Probably at his hideout. Nobody in the world knows where it is but him. December 14, 1946. Rocco has just learned Olga has returned home from the hospital. This is an emergency. Give me the police, quick. Homicide. By 9.45, Alga's house was under police protection. All were waiting for the unpredictable Rocco to strike any second, and he was unpredictable. It was just a trick. Seated half a block away, he was watching and enjoying the result of his call. He knew Alga was suffering more than if he'd really appeared and shot her. <laughs> but night and day, she was under our police protection. Even as she worked as a secretary at the Consolidated Dress Company office. No sign of Rocco. But Rocco was in his underworld hideout, working on a fiendish piece of mechanism. A murder weapon to be used in a scheme so fantastic, it will be remembered by our police department for years to come. A weird implement for the perfect crime. Then, the next step of the extraordinary murder plan. Pardon me. Uh, pardon me, miss. I don't want you to think I'm getting fresh. I have a very important job that has to be done. Would you work for me? I have a job. Well, this is different. I'm a detective. Well, I don't understand. May I sit down and explain myself? Well, I was waiting Thank to... you. My name's LaRue. I'm a private detective. We have a woman under surveillance. We're confident that she's a diamond smuggler. We're also sure that she hides the diamonds on a person. Why, why choose me? Well, we don't dare use a regular woman detective. The suspect might recognize the type. Oh, gee. It'd be perfectly safe. It'd be a wonderful adventure for you, and I'd pay it $10 an hour. Well, I suppose I should think about it, but... Golly, it sure sounds exciting. Where can I call you? 
Well, Woodbury, 7132. Miss Ragert. Miss Ragert. That's a beautiful name. <sighs> On December 27th at 9.10 p.m., the murder weapon was completed. It was loaded with one ounce of powder and 144 shots, any one of which was capable of killing. Rocco placed the device in a specially prepared cheese box. He concealed the barrel in a tin can from which the bottom had been cut. He then wrapped it in paper, and he was ready to sell an innocent person into becoming an unknown murderess. 10 p.m., he had an appointment. Um, would you repeat it, please? Well, Miss Trapani works for the Consolidated Dress Company. We'll stand across the street. And you'll point her out to me? Yeah. Now, I want you to follow her when she leaves work. She often goes shopping or goes walking. When do you want me to take the picture? When you get real close without her seeing you. I think I can do it. Oh, it's so big. Well, it has to be. It's an X-ray camera. Oh. Well, then even if the jewels are hidden under her clothing, they can still be seen in the picture. Yeah. Well, won't the picture look like she doesn't have any... Certainly. Oh, gee, it's getting so a girl won't be safe walking down Fifth Avenue. That's what I like about you, your big smile. Now, back to business. Now, this is the lens of the X-ray camera. You gotta point it directly at her when you, uh, when you pull the shutter. Now, this takes the picture. But you gotta get real close so you won't miss. I won't miss. Honestly, I won't. Day for the murder, 5.10 p.m. Bronco, standing in the hallway, pointed Olga out to Miss Regard. Miss Regard started trailing her. camera back to you. Take it to work with you. I'll pick it up in the morning. Good night. Night. December 30, 8.50 a.m. Rocco got the intended murder box from Miss Regard and made an appointment to meet her at a restaurant that night at 8.30. At his hideout, he examined the mechanism. No, she hadn't lied. She had pulled the trigger, but the cartridge hadn't exploded. It was a defective shell. What will happen next time? I want you to do exactly the same thing tomorrow morning. What time? I'll pick you up at 4th Avenue and 14th Street at 8 o'clock in the morning. I'll take you to the BMT station near her home. All right. It means getting up a little bit early, but... You're a detective now. You're right. I'll do just like you say. Eight thirty-five a.m. A BMT subway station. Miss Record was scanning the crowds for Olga Trapani. Finally, she saw her, but covered by the crowd.
It wouldn't happen once in a thousand times during rush hour, but Miss Regard was able to jam into a seat right next to Olga Trapani. She actually rode the entire trip sitting next to her, congratulating herself on her work as a detective. The subway train was packed, but no one realized that right in their midst, one of the most fiendish crimes was in the making. shoved her way through the crowd as best she could. We've got the DD-24 sheets and MO card on Rocco. Is Miss Trapani any better? They're amputating her leg now, and then they'll know. I swear I thought it was a camera. Homicide, Detective Cert. Oh, Miss Rigard? Chief wants to see you. Through there. Get radio. Thanks, and try to get on to headquarters radio. as fast as you can, will you? Oh, Miss Rigard? Charlie, a guy just called says he's a friend of Rocco's. Doesn't want to get mixed up in this, and Rocco's stolen his car. Seven twenty p.m. An isolated farmhouse at Gilboa, New York. We interrupt this program to bring you this special police broadcast. Al Rocco, male Caucasian, medium build, dark complexion, is wanted for questioning in the shooting of Olga Trapani. Rocco is believed to be in the Gilboa area. Citizens are urged to lock their doors and report any unusual persons to the police. He is armed and considered to be dangerous. If you encounter Al Rocco, do exactly as he says. You heard what the man said. Do as I say, follow my orders, and you won't get hurt. Maybe. It's, it's almost 7.30. It's the baby's bedtime. I'll just put her to bed, and then I'll fix you something to eat. Now, look, maybe I got other plans, huh? Oh, she always goes to bed no later than 7.30. Well, maybe it's about time she learned some tricks. Hey, that's kind of cute. Boy or girl? Girl. Hey, you got to go something to be as good looking as your old lady. Now, you sit right here. The whereabouts of Al Rocco has been narrowed to the vicinity of East Gilboa. All roads are blocked and the police are expecting to make contact momentarily. Please keep all doors and windows locked and stand by for further announcements. They're closing in on you. East Gilboa? That's 20 miles away. Besides, a cop doesn't live that's smarter than Al Rocco. Can't I please put the baby to bed? It's way past her bedtime. Leave her where she is. That way we both know she's safe. <laughs> Get wise, you're on a spot. The cops are coming for me and I'm not leaving alone, so you figure it out. Where's your husband? Away on a... He'll be home soon. I heard you the first time. He's away on a trip. That means you're stuck with me. I've been told that's not such a bad break. What are you... I got plans. Police report that a stolen car, licensed 2D7876, New York State, has been found abandoned on a country road east of Gilboa. Local and state police are cooperating in a house-to-house -house search. Okay, sister, let's get going. Cops will never stop a man with his wife and kid. Car 27, take all houses on Geneva Road South and proceed north. Authority, Gilboa Dispatcher 12, XYM. 
Car 27, acknowledging. Over. Dig up. Please don't take us with you. Don't let me lose my patience. I've been nice to you. Don't spoil it. Let's go get that car I saw in the garage. All right. I have to put some things in a bag. Such as? The babies need special care. All right, snap it up. Police report that they have isolated Al Rocco in one of four farm homes on northern Geneva Road, just a few miles outside of Gilboa. An arrest is expected within the next five or ten minutes, and... Two houses left. If he's not in one of them, he's given us a slip. Well, there's one way to find out. Hello? Anybody home? I don't like this. Neither do I. Let's make it quick. officers. What happened? Did you faint or did someone strike you? He struck me. Who struck you? Rocco. Are you sure it was Rocco? He bragged about it. He must have scrammed when we drove up. Now you just stay right here, ma'am. We'll take a look around. What's wrong with your baby, ma'am? Where's my baby? He took my baby. There's no baby here, ma'am. He was carrying my little girl. Oh, please, God, no. No, no. And so the baby girl was safe and sound. But for Rocco, it was all over. He had planned the perfect crime, but it backfired. Miss Trapani, whom Rocco tried to murder, lost a leg. But she is alive today and happy. Miss Reggard, having cooperated with the authorities 100% and not having any criminal intent, was forgiven later by Miss Trapani. Now, in just a moment, gangbusters will broadcast a clue to a person still at large tonight and wanted by the police. Attention. Attention to all citizens and police. Wanted for escape from Alcatraz. Ralph Rowe, 49. Six feet tall, 170 pounds. Gray eyes. Scar above right eyebrow. Several stars tattooed on left hand. Ralph Rowe, with at least eight arrests, was sentenced to 99 years at Alcatraz for bank robbery. Rowe escaped from Alcatraz and is now a fugitive. Approach with caution. Roe is dangerous and may be armed. Repeat, wanted for escape from Alcatraz. Ralph Roe, 49, 
six feet, 170 pounds, gray eyes, scar above right eyebrow. Concerning this clue, notify your local police, the FBI, or gangbusters at once. Our next case deals with an entirely different criminal, and it's authentic, right from the police files. On behalf of the police, we invite you to join us. Gangbusters, created by Phillips H. Lord. you have heard tonight was based upon police records, court records, and personal interviews. 